Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And now, NMPC Oil has pledged to produce 2 million barrels of crude oil daily. Um, joining us to discuss all of this is Nick Aguli, the public, a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. And good morning to our viewers. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, so let's just get straight to the crux of the matter. NMPSCL has pledged to produce 2 million barrels of crude oil daily. Um, as of right now, we are currently producing about 1.35 million barrels. Can we get to 2 million barrels so quickly that they are pledging for that at the moment? I think we need to clarify the statement of the NMPC because uh, something doesn't seem to be right. The 1.3 million that you have quoted is Nigeria's crude oil production. That is not NMPC's crude oil production. It's Nigeria's crude oil production, meaning the entirety of the production in Nigeria uh, by all the upstream operators in Nigeria, including the international oil companies, the indigenous operators, and the NMPC itself. So when NMPC says we are going to produce 2 million barrels of crude oil per day, they needed to clarify whether the 2 million barrels is Nigeria's crude oil production or this is crude oil that will be produced by the NMPC itself. Because the last time I checked, I was actually trying to check current numbers. You know, um, so I don't have current numbers. But the last time I was aware, the NMPC as a company were producing around about 150,000 barrels of crude oil per day through their upstream entity, which was called the National Petroleum Development, Nigerian Petroleum Development Company. Mm. That was the name of the, of the, of the upstream as, uh, as a company in the NMPC. And that upstream company, the headquarters is in Benin, yes. on Sapley Road. I yes. know them very well, mm -hmm. you know? So, so that, that, that was NMPC production the last time I knew it was about 150,000. So when they say they are going to produce 2 million barrels, I am saying, is it the NMPC that want to grow their production from 150,000 barrels to 2 million barrels? Or they are referring to Nigeria's production currently at about 1.3 million, 1.4 million barrels to 2 million barrels. So I think uh, we need to ask the NMPC to clarify what they mean here because it's not, it's not very clear. Uh, but let us, let us at this point assume that it is going to be the totality of what is produced in Nigeria. Remember that the OPEC gave uh, Nigeria a quota that they have not been able to meet and all that. So we are worried that, okay, now that they're projecting 2 million barrels per day in 2024, what were the problems in the first place that made them not able to uh, get to that uh, benchmark that was given to them by, by OPEC, and then how are they addressing them? Are they all going to be able to address them so much so that they are going to have 2 million barrels per day in 2024? You are in the oil sector. Enlighten us. Do you think the problems that made them not able to produce uh, up to the quota that was given to them will totally disappear in 2024 and enable them to get to 200 million, uh, 2, 2 million, million barrels per day? It's a, it's a very valid question. And, it, you know, I think Nigeria has a real budget problem, uh, which we're not even talking about. Because our open quota was 1.7 million barrels uh, uh, last year or this year that we're, we're finishing. And then we couldn't uh, meet up with that open quota. So for 2024, OPEC has slashed our quota down to 1.3 at 1.38 uh, million barrels. Meanwhile, Nigeria's budget is predicated on 1.7 million barrels of crude oil production every day. I think it's 1.78 million barrels every day. 
at uh, 77 dollars per barrel uh, oil price and if we cannot grow our production to 1.7 million barrels which is the valid point that you are making here that what magic is going to be at play to enable us add 400,000 barrels of crude oil production every day to the numbers that we're currently churning out to enable us to meet up with the budgetary provision if we can't foresee that happening then it, it means that nigeria's 2024 budget is already in crisis because if we cannot generate the revenue to fund the budget then two things will have, have to happen is either we will not implement the budget fully or we will have to go and borrow again to fund the budget so the question is that at 1.3 million barrels now what is going to happen if we are to grow production to 1.78 million barrels given my experience in the oil industry i mean i worked in the oil industry for over 20 years here in nigeria and, and overseas i know it is possible given the capacity that we have let's not forget this country nigeria produced over 2 million barrels of crude oil per day previously mm. i used to work for shell in nigeria and as at the time I worked for Shell in the, in the late 90s into the 2000s, Shell alone as a company produced over 1 million barrels of crude oil per day. Shell alone. We want to talk about all the other operators. So it means we have the capacity installed for us to grow production to 2 million barrels. The question is that is the government courageous enough, sincere enough? to face the issues that are militating against our producing 2 million barrels? If they are, yes, we can achieve it. But if they are not, and they, are, they continue to pay lip service to the issues, then we are not going to be able to achieve that. Because as we speak today, the government itself acknowledges that about a million barrels of our crude production is being stolen. You know? So if the government address that situation and say, look, you will steal one barrel of crude oil and we will fix an appointment with God for you. <laughs> then the, the stealing of uh, crude oil will stop. We have a Nigeria with, with uh, the armed forces. We have the army, the navy, we have the, 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 the air force, who, who, are, who are superintended over by a chief of defense staff. Each of these armed forces have a chief. And then the, the chief of defense staff is there. Then we have, we have uh, uh, like Nigeria Security and Civil Defense, we have police, we have a DIA, we have MIA, we have all sorts of security apparatus in Nigeria, and yet we have to turn to a private security firm to come and provide security to our oil installations. Mm. You know, in a way that suggests that, look, this entire architecture, because let's not forget, even this budget that we're talking about, defense carries the highest chunk of the budget. Mm. Every year, year in, year out. This time around, same thing. You know, so we spend money on security and the security is not being provided. So we now have to spend more money to go and bring in a private security firm to come and police our oil infrastructure. This is what I'm talking about, sincerity in government. Because I know that if President Tinubu wants to deal with once and for all, the issues in our oil industry in Nigeria, he can do so, but he has to be prepared to take on the powers that be, those who are behind the stealing of this crude oil, those who are sponsoring these people, those who are their cover. He has to be ready to say, between you guys and Nigerians, I am going to side with Nigeria. So business as usual has ended. Is the president ready to take on this fight? That is the million naira question. I want to say million dollar. Let me say that's one billion naira question that is on the table. Mm. Okay. So since we're on the premise of um, NMPCL might not be the one producing all of this um, crude oil, which is 1.35, yes, uh, thereabouts, 
Dangote is about to produce as well, and Dangote He's is producing fuel, not, not uh, crude oil. Yeah, We're yeah. Talking about crude oil right now. Okay, yeah. but then um, with the fact that Dangote is coming in as well, um, is there a possibility that Dangote might start to produce to help, <laughs> or are there are there going to be other um, um, companies who would come to ensure that we can also um, produce this quota that we have of about two million? Of course, uh, Nigeria's uh, oil and gas industry is very attractive to uh, investors globally. If, even now, it's still very much attractive to investors globally. Uh, but before I even make one comment, I think there is something I would like to say. You know, the NMPC is the biggest problem in the Nigeria's oil and gas industry. We speak about this thing all the time. A lot of Nigerians actually even think that the NMPC is a regulator, is some sort of government company. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a regulator of the oil industry. Uh, a lot of Nigerians don't understand that the regulator of the oil industry used to be the Department for Petroleum Resources, DPR, that is now defunct. With the passage of the Petroleum Industry Act, the Department of Petroleum Resources is now being split into two. So there is a regulator for the upstream business which is the upstream commission, and then there's a regulator for the downstream business, which is the downstream authority. So we have a commission regulating uh, upstream, a, an authority regulating downstream. The NMPC is actually a player. I mean, it, it, let, me, let me use the central bank uh, so that maybe Nigeria can get this better. The banking sector is regulated by the central bank. So the central bank is a regulator. The central bank is regulating the Zenith banks, the GT banks, the Fidelity banks, the Union banks, the First Bank, the UBA. In the oil industry, the equivalent of the central bank in the oil industry is not the NMPC. It is the upstream commission for upstream and the downstream authority for downstream. The NMPC is just like Zenith Bank. It's just like UBA. It's just like uh, Fidelity Bank or name any bank. The NMPC is a player in the oil industry. It's a company that should be making profit for Nigeria. But what the NMPC has done, which President Tinubu should be looking into things like this is, when the NMPC, so imagine, imagine that, if, let me go back to banking to make it very clear for Nigerians. So imagine that in, in Nigeria, the, the government of Nigeria owns a bank. That is competing with Zenith and Union Bank, or call it Nigeria owned bank. Instead of Nigeria owned bank making their own profit and using it to pay their staff and pay all their costs, what they do is that they go and gather the profit of Zenith Bank, Union Bank, UBA, everything into their own account. And then they now start using that money to pay their staff when they are staff themselves are producing little or nothing. This is what is happening in the oil industry. And I hope uh, this analogy is, is painting the true picture of what is happening because the NMPC as a company, instead of producing their own crude oil, producing their own gas, refining their own crude oil and doing all that, they are not doing any of those things. The NMPC have been spending humongous money exploring for crude oil in the northern Nigeria since I was born. They have been exploring for crude oil in northern Nigeria. They have not succeeded in producing one single barrel of crude oil in the whole of northern Nigeria. If they have, I will need someone to contradict me. Even in the southern Nigeria, the Niger data where they are, like I said, the last time their production was a measly 150,000 barrels per day. This NMPC, without doing much, now goes to take the crude oil produced by Chevron, by Mobile, by Shell, and then they sell it. When they sell it, they bring the money into the NMPC. They spend the money into the NMPC. It is what is left that they now transfer to, to the Federation account. And as we know, for a long time now, they have not been putting much in the Federation account. The question is that how will Shell and the uh, Mobile and the uh, Chevron give NMPC the crude oil that they are producing? The reason is because 
Chevron share mobile, all those international oil companies in Nigeria are running joint ventures with the government of Nigeria. Yeah. So, like I worked in Chevron, I know that the government of Nigeria owns 60% of that joint venture and Chevron 40%. I work for Shell. I know, nobody's telling me, I know that the government of Nigeria owns 55% of that joint venture and then for the 45% used to be owned by three international oil companies which they have all almost sold to indigenous operators now. So what happens is that if Chevron produces one million barrels of crude oil, 600,000 belongs to the government of Nigeria, while 400,000 belong to Chevron Corporation in the US. The NNPC goes to take that 600,000 barrels from Chevron and sells it, and then they take the money into the NNPC. So if Imagine uh, the, 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 the Zenith Bank, if it's a government bank, going to UBA to go and take the money that UBA is making on behalf of government. Then they put the, the, the proceeds in the NNPC, they sell it, and then they not, they not spend the money on themselves. It will interest you to know that the NNPC is paying some of the, the highest salaries in Nigeria. And the monies are not coming from the revenues that they are generating. The monies are coming from the crude oil produced on behalf of Nigeria by international oil companies in joint venture with the government of Nigeria and the Nigerian people, consequently. And they are spending this money. If President Tinubu is interested in reforms in the oil industry, the first thing he must do is to take the NNPC away from the crude oil that is being produced for Nigeria by the international oil companies. Remove NNPC's hands from it. If President Tinubu likes, he can create a department in the presidency or even in the Ministry of Petroleum and say you are the one responsible for taking the crude oil from Chevron, from Shell, from Total, from uh, Ajib, from, from uh, Mobile, and selling it on behalf of the government. And once you sell it, put the money straight into the federation account so that the NNPC should either swim or sink on their own oil they should they should cook their own because you see if the nnpc were not taking the crude oil produced for nigeria by these iocs the nnpc would have long been bankrupt either they would have been bankrupt or they would, they would have become more serious more serious in the sense that they have four refineries that as we speak are, are refining zero barrels of crude oil they needed to get the refineries to be working so that they can make money and pay their staff they don't refine. The staff get nothing. But right now, they don't refine as they are doing now. The, the, the oil coming from the IOCs is there feeding them. So this is one message that President Tinubu must take on board. Remove the NNPC, which is a clear business, away from Nigeria's share of joint venture crude oil production. Let the NNPC work for themselves and pay their salary. That is the first thing that President Tinubu must do. And then, subsequently, we'll answer your question whether we can grow this production. Like I say, we have capacity for 2 million barrels. That capacity is still on the ground. We only need to take certain steps to unlock it. Like if we deal with security, we will unlock it. If we uh, deal with uh, uh, NMPC share, okay, okay. So that's another problem I want to talk about. Because, let's say, using the Chevron joint venture, the government has 60% of the joint venture. Chevron wants to spend $1 billion to produce oil. Nigerian government must bring $600 million, mm -hmm. while Chevron Corporation US will bring $400 million. Because Nigeria is finding it difficult to fund the joint venture, you find out that Chevron's program is not being operated. And that is the same thing with all the other JVs in Shell, in Mobile, in Total Energy, and all of that. So if the government is not bringing the money, then the plan to produce more oil in Nigeria is stalled. So if the government decides that instead of funding these job ventures, just privatize the whole thing, let private sector bring in the money, do the work, I as a government will be responsible, I mean, we will only be interested in taking the taxes that come from this. Then there will be so much investment in the sector. And why are we talking about 2 million barrels? Can we talk about 3 million barrels, even 5? If we allow private sector investment to actually invest in Nigeria without this interference from government. Hmm.
Well, I, I wish we had more time to discuss yeah. this because it's really a turning yeah. issue. But at this time, we need to really wrap up. Uh, and Nick, we'd like to thank you for being a part of our program. We may continue this discussion at some other time, but yeah. for now, this is where we drop it. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you, Nigeria. And let us keep up our life in better Nigeria. Okay, let's take a short break and when we return we'll be talking about what's happening in River State. Stay with us. <laughs>